Okay, before you do this, it's very important that you delete by type history. Before you even try it. And then go into revolve, square box. And in this case, I'm going to revolve it around the Y direction. Okay, so this is going to be my pivot point. It's going to rotate all the way around, correlating to that. And then I'm going to choose polygons, quads, and count. And I'm going to make this about 500 poly. And now I have this. Okay, now what's really nice about this is the fact that I can edit it after the fact. And here's how you do that. If I go into the vertice of the curve, if I click on the curve and go into the vertice, I can use the direction arrows to kind of jump vertices. So let's say this is the outside edge of the curve. I know that by clicking here, if I click to the left arrow, it jumps onto something that's all the way up to the top here. And I can adjust these after the fact. So I can manipulate this around if I wanted to, and it manipulates the geometry around. Now that's one way to do it. And a good example of this is, let's say this bottom, I wanted to make it so it comes in a little bit. I can do that after the fact. And I get a whole different look to it. Okay, like a chalice maybe. Okay, so I can make that very quickly. But as far as fixing this stuff, okay, I would probably sooner do that via the polygons, via the edges, okay? Because you can do this little trick right here. Under polygons, there is that one transform component and transform, com transform component allows me to pull these out or in. So that tool is a little bit handier sometimes uh, for fixing this stuff. Again, you can go G on the keyboard and you can jump right back into it. So that's how you manipulate it. You can manipulate it via the curve or you can manipulate it via the transform component. Okay, when you're done though, you should have something that when you go to the next level, mesh smooth, it's an incredible piece where it's nice and well blended. You can see in this case, I got right here, these are overlapping a little bit. Okay, so you're going to have to manipulate this curve back in order to fix that. You can see it clearly here. It's a harder to see in the other view. Okay. Now, I wanted to show you this because it's very important that you know after you tweak your polygons and then you go back to your curves, look what happens. Okay, that's what happens. It ruins your geometry. So be very wary of how you manipulate your shape of your curve when you manipulate your um, polygons. And just know that there is ways to fix all this up by just going in here and deleting the geometry, fixing up your curve so your profiles match, so in this case you want this as an outer profile and the inner profile you would just kind of match to it and it's so much easier to go back into the revolve command than it is trying to uh, fix both the polygon structure and the curves at once. So I do not want to see overlapping geometry like this ever. Okay. Go to revolve, hit apply, bam fixes it right up. In this case, look at nice, nice curve, nice blend of the object. And if you wanted to do something like that, that's when you take the object, 
Command D, duplicate it, and I grab this edge and this edge by double clicking on it, holding shift, and I can go in here and transform component and bulge that out a little bit. Okay. Then I can use the move tool to move it up a little bit. So there, I got that same kind of look as I got over here, but this has better polygon structure. That way when I go to the next level, I got this. Okay. All right, that is the wine glass example, and that's how you totally manipulate it in all sense of the terms and all the woes if you do it in the wrong direction. All right, enjoy. Move on to the next video.